All right, let's uh, pray and we'll get started. Father, that you would uh, nourish the soul today, the saints, and uh, uh, touch our hearts today. Now, Father, as only you're able to do. Our hearts and our minds. Now, Father, we we'll follow you more closely. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right. Uh, Acts 4, the uh, 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 things are probably going to get started moving a little faster here. I did finish. I did not finish it, but I wanted to, but I, I didn't quite. But anyway, uh, this is the first time that you have some notes in front of you. And they're pretty well consolidated. I took a, a quick look at it. I outlined uh, the, the uh, verses. Uh, the results, I, I would assume, I, I can't remember making these uh, outline, it's even two weeks ago. The results of what took place here, uh, the, the outline for verses 1 through 4, the outline of um, uh, let's see here, we go to every uh, Every paragraph marking, we got one in five, we got one in 13, we have one in 23. If you have a Bible that has those, uh, you do not have one in 24, but I split it out. And then you have one at verse 31, but I put it at verse 32. And generally, I don't like it when guys do that, split them out. I just stick with the, with the paragraph markings and say they know more than me. <laughs> I, I put them there. The results, I would assume, from the preaching, uh, you have 5,000 get saved. The rebuke in... <clears throat> uh, the rebuke, they rebuke them for it. This is when the priests do that. And the reply that the... Uh, that's verses uh, 5 through 12. The reply that Peter and John then uh, give a reply in verses 13 through 22... And then they give, the reason I broke this out, they give a report in, in verse 23. After they're let go, they go to their own company. They go back to the church and give a report. And then the request, I, uh, I, I did it with according to the uh, uh, prayer. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice. So they make a prayer, verses 24 through 31. And when they had prayed, see it continues with that word prayer there. And then, uh, then the righteous, the ones that it had, a, a, I, I, I assume, affected here. Yeah, all the way to where they had, uh, all kind of were unified here again, the righteous. All right, so the results were uh, uh, outlining that. There was preaching that took place, and as they spake unto the people, so there's preaching. And uh, uh, then the, I called them priests, I've got to get a P word in there. When really it's the Sadducees as far as this group. And then they're they are cast into uh, prison. They uh, put them in hold. So they put them in a prison. And the prize was that 5,000 people had gotten saved. All right, in verse 1, we, we kind of went over this. It's the Sadducees. They feel threatened. And they were preaching, verse 2, being grieved that they taught the people, preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Now, we went over this last week, and we looked over, over these verses. It's the Sadducees that didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. These Pharisees, Sadducees, uh, when did all that kind of come into existence? Anybody recall? Let's say from survey. It would be between Malachi and Matthew during these 400 silent years is when these groups uh, came into existence. So this, they, they feel threatened. And people do feel threatened. Uh, what is the... Uh, let's take cell phones as an example. What percentage of the population... Now, it, we're going to talk about America. We, we're not interested in the rest of the world. Do not have cell phones. And don't say one person on the planet. That's me. What, what percentage? Maybe 25. You think of one-fourth of the people do not have cell phones? I, I, I don't know. You're guessing. That do not have them. Anybody here not have one? You think it's 10%. I was thinking it's like 10%. One out of ten do not have one. 
So in other words, you're saying it's... I know somebody doesn't have a cell phone. All right, so it's getting slimmer and slimmer. I, I know at one time, uh, CNC came out in the late 70s. Uh, we were studying that in school in the early 70s. I did not, that wasn't my senior design project. I did a mechanical multi-spindle machine for a, for a machine uh, for my uh, senior project. And uh, nobody did a CNC, but they came out in the late 70s. And it was dot to dot. Anybody know what point to point is uh, as compared to circular interpolation? Anybody know? If you don't know, it's okay. Today, they finally have uh, created circular interpolation, which means they can make a curve. Where years ago, it was the computer went dot to dot, point to point. Yeah. So if you blow up a circle, or let's say you make a, a, an O, it, and you blow it up and magnify it, you can see all the jiggles. And the, 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 uh, the more inferior the machine and the programming, the more jiggles you had. And so the more that you, you uh, incorporated in the program, the less jiggles. And you used up a lot of memory, and it took a lot of, uh, a lot of software package to create that. Then they finally made circular interpolation work to make it a perfect curve. I don't know how it's done. They do it. Anyway, when it comes on, on people feel threatened by that. Uh, what, what's famous saying about the uh, uh, Air Force when the plane started and the, uh, that the uh, government, they, they approached the government about taking on airplanes and creating the Air Force. Anybody know what the famous st statement is? It's something like that. It's it's one of the generals said, forget it. It's it's going nowhere. They were toys. Yeah, it's they just. They were interesting toys. Yeah, they it was. Really uh, there's there's some famous statement by some uh, guy that makes decisions <coughs> that it wasn't going to go anywhere, but it, it ends up go going somewhere. So anyway, people feel threatened when they feel as though they're. Uh, uh, being ousted. And the Sadducees are getting ousted here because they're preaching the resurrection of the dead. What do unions do when they're going to be ousted? Strike. They strike, they riot, they, uh, they, they smash the printing press, right? They come in and smash the printing press, yes. Those generals had no imagination. They're looking at a plane that's got one guy in it and think, and they have no concept of what the possibilities are of technology. Well, somebody did, though, you know, to, uh, uh, who was the ones that first uh, adopted the machine gun? Good guys or the bad guys? The bad guys. The good guys didn't want it, and then they were outgunned and so on. But anyway, they feel threatened, so they feel threatened, and they do not believe in the spirit world. <clears throat> so they're more into the physical world and not into the spirit wor world. All right, verse 3, uh, they laid hands on them. Um, uh, that one, I think when we go to back to John, you don't have to go back to John 16. It's when he's, uh, John 13 is the washing of the feet. He's only, he's alone with his disciples. He's uh, preaching on the Holy Spirit in 15. Uh, if you're my friends, you're uh, John uh, 15, John 16, is still talking about the Holy Spirit. And, and probably this <coughs> verses 1 through 3, is there's going to come a day when they lay hands on you thinking they're doing God a favor, right? The religious crowd thinks they're doing God a favor when they're putting, putting a stop to you. So they laid hands on them. Being grieved, and people do get grieved by this stuff. And they were, they were grieved. When we uh, look at those verses, Revelation 2, verses 6 and 15, what group is there? What, what group is Revelation 2, verse 6 and verse 15? It's the doctrine that... The, doc, the deeds and the doctrine of the what? The Nicolaitans. The clergy over the laity. And people feel threatened. All right? Uh, uh, Jude 4 is uh, men creep in unawares. Acts 20 is grievous wolves will come in not sparing the flock. Uh, third John is Demetrius having uh, wanted the... Uh, he wanted the... Uh, Preeminence, that's the word, preeminence. And Titus 3 is a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition. So there's heresy 
they're going on reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted, uh, not knowing the truth. All right, uh, they they preach, uh, and I think Sister put them in more of an order than I had. Verse two, the resurrection, what the Sadducees did not believe. So it singles them out. And Paul used that to his advantage. Remember when they were gonna, it was almost like they were gonna tear them apart. He pits the Sadducees against the Pharisees because the Pharisees believe in the resurrection of the spirit world. And they're actually like tearing Paul apart. All right, put them in hold. Um, since we're close to Acts 5.41, we could go there. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for it. Uh, for their uh, for his name. All right, they beat them. I don't know why it doesn't say put them in hold there. Uh, go to First Peter four sixteen. First Peter four sixteen. I just didn't want to start someplace, and I didn't mark down where I stopped last week because you didn't have any notes. Four sixteen. Oh, it's about this suffering. Put them in hold. Suffering. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on, on his behalf. So uh, if you're going to suffer, suffer as a Christian. Uh, now, I, I assume in other countries, uh, cell phones are pretty well much worldwide. I told the wife, I think it was yesterday, if the Russians take over... Anybody know what Germany was trying to buy their freedom with or favors with in World War II when they were marching them off to the gulags? Germany was trying to, uh, the soldiers would try to, you know, give me a cup of water, uh, give me some favors while they, while they were marching them off. What did Russia not have? And they were giving it to them. Anybody recall? I think I brought it up in here once. I read about it. And I could have talked to a GI that actually stated that. Wrist watches. Uh, Russia didn't have that. They actually would fold up whole factories. And if, if they wanted that factory, they just folded the whole thing up. Employees and all, they took them. And that their, their uh, uniforms were lined with wrist watches, flying favors, taking their watches. So I said, well, uh, if Russia takes over, they're going to have pockets full of uh, cell phones. Right? They'll try to buy a glass of water with a cell phone. Uh, uh, as far as suffering, suffering as a Christian, if, if you're going to suffer, that's, that's how you want to suffer. Amen? Uh, verse 4 was the 5,000 had gotten saved. It's the first fruits. Uh, technically, what would be the first fruits? What does it state is the first fruit? Barley harvest. Oh, I don't mean uh, a physical one, a spiritual one. I think Jesus is the first fruit. <coughs> and then when he takes captivity captive, he takes all of those Old Testament saints with him. But we're likening on this, the first preaching that's going on, the first fruits. Obviously, 3,000 get saved the day of grace. 3,000 died when the law came in. And now 5,000. So the first fruits is when the biggest of the harvest comes in. Yes. Well, the day that Christ died, the certain saints were resurrected that day. Uh, right, right, and walked about. Right, exactly. And then, uh, uh, and then we liken this unto the uh, gleanings. And the gleanings are, you got rotten fruit on there, very little left. Uh, some, uh, some green ones on there. Uh, it, the sun is going down, it's tough to get people saved. It's harder to do that. All right, so the first, first fruits are always the most fun. If anybody here has done any picking, you know that. You know that. All right, all right. And now the ruling class, verses five, uh, five and six. The this Jewish ruling body. You have priests, the captain of the temple, the Sadducees in verse one. You have the rulers, the elders, the scribes, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Al John and Alexander, and, and the kindred of the... Uh, the kin, wait, what did I say? Kin yeah, kindred of the high priest. So it's a family affair. And the assumption uh, I've read where the high priest, yeah, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, that those could be, as they're mentioned, they could be actually five high priests. One would be the real one, and the others are elected by Rome or 
somehow, and they're, they're not real high priests, but those, uh, but there's a bunch of them. In verse uh, chapter 5, verse 21, it is the council and the senate of the children of Israel. Verse 21 of chapter 5. When they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. The high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. So you got the... Uh, this uh, Sanhedrin, you have the, this group of ruling class. Uh, Proverbs 11.21, I don't remember that verse. <sighs> Proverbs 11.21. Uh, oh yeah, though hand joined in hand, wicked sh the, the wicked shall not be un unpunished. Hey, that's a promise, though hand uh, hand joined in hand. All right, what, uh, other than who, let, let's forget who Hillary is, personally. Let's forget who Trump is. It, it's not important who Hillary is and who Trump is, the, the actual person. Why does the general public seem to want to have Trump elected? <coughs> well, it ties in with his point. They're tired of politics and this ruling class as usual. Uh, some are saying the blue dogs or blue bloods. That would have been, uh, uh, who, who was the VP? He was the president, Nixon's man. Ford, Gerald Ford was a blue blood. He would have been the, the country club blue blood. And uh, so the idea is that, well, uh, Ryan, what's his name? Uh, Paul. Paul Ryan, all these guys, they, they want to keep the status quo. Uh, if you're on Fox News, you're not really upset what's going on because it doesn't matter who gets in there, the do re mi is going to keep flowing. Yes? The Democrats are globalist and uh, Trump is uh, nationalist. Half the Republicans are globalist too. Are what? Globalist. Globalist. And Trump's a nationalist. Oh, 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 I see. A constitutionalist. All right. Well, I Local say... Local control rather than outside influence. I, I say it's all about the do re -me, the money. That they, uh, it's just going to be status quo. If Hillary's in there, it's status quo. And those those that know how to get in the right line, if, if, if the Democrats get in, you get in this line to get your dough, Remy. If the Republicans get in it, well, then you just change lines to get your dough. And, and they just don't want to have, they don't want to have the status quo messed up. And these disciples are messing up the status quo. And that's what uh, Jesus does. He messes up the status quo. Now, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. Listen, these people that join hand in hand, they're going to get their just desserts. If not here, there. All right, so that's a promise that we have. All right, verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have ye done this? <clears throat> so they, they recognized there was power in, 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 done, in what is it that they did. And that goes back to Acts chapter 3, verse 6. This is what they're still is fresh in their mind what has just happened, and that is the healing of this beggar that could not walk, that could not walk. Then Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. All right, so he, he, uh, he uh, by what power and by what name? All right, so uh, in verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none, back to uh, Acts 4, 12. Uh, uh, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So that is the, the name that has the power. Uh, we put up, you know, we drove by, I did not see it though. Uh, Nathan showed it to me while we were on the boat on Friday. He showed, showed it to me. They're able to do this while they're even out there. And I, I don't know what her name is. What's the girl's name that does this now, do you know? It was an easy name like Debbie or something. Anyway. And, and right away showed it to me. And yeah, put it up there. We, we got to get busy. The other two, 
the uh, RNC, the DNC, then we switch it to the uh, uh, a, A, and C all need Christ, and then the Y and C you need Christ. I mean, how not there like a dirt, like like old glory went through four wars, you know? It, it hung up there like an old rag. So we we switched it out. It should be up there now. I said, take them both down. Only the one. It'll scroll twice as fast, or twice as many times. And uh, it was Jesus Christ, the name of, which is above every name. All right, that's what we put up there. We put up as references Acts 4, verse 12, and where else would you go for the name of Christ, being above every name? What's the other verse? I know it's early. The name above every name. Philippians. Every knee shall bow. And every knee shall bow. That's what we use. I think it's verse 8 through 11. Philippians 2. Verses 8 through 11. Those two references are up there. And I said there's, there's no restriction as to how many times we can switch this out. Folks, we, we could switch it out every other week and just put a verse up there uh, and then maybe put a picture up and so on. But we need to, we need to get this rotated more often. All right? And, and continually. And, and I need to be more involved in that. Uh, let us look at, uh, uh, we're close to John. Go to John 5, 27. <clears throat> well, who gave you this power? Who gave you this authority? All right, the Father gave the Son the authority and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. I know when we did our van, and we had the tire uh, cover on our van, it was a, I don't know what year it was, probably from the 80s, and it had a tire cover on there, and I had my man put a, uh, Jesus saves on there, he wrote it on there. Folks, it's the name of Christ that does it. That's what does it, all right? So all these verses, are that. But what gives us our authority in, in that list there? Matthew 28, 9, the Great Commission. In verse 18, it says, All authority has been, all authority and power has been given to Jesus. And verse 19 is that we go out and, and he gives us the, the authority to go out there and preach. The Great Commission. So the and there's power in his name. All right. Um, Uh, well, we're, we were in John 5. Go to John 7. Let's see what that one says. John 7, 15. Yeah, no. What was the end of that second page? I don't know how, why I have that there. It seemed like I would have had that in another spot. Anyway, John 7, uh, 15. And the Jew, Jews marveled, saying, How know what this man led us, having never learned? Uh, I think I have that coming up again here. Uh, and that is that they were unlearned. Yeah, that comes up here later. Is that in your notes? Yeah, I have that coming up here again. Uh, they were unlearned and, and ignorant. Uh, what famous preacher didn't go to school? I mean school at all or? No, I don't mean school at all. Uh, you know, in reading this, they'll name them off about being unlearned and ignorant. And one guy was, was in school and decided to quit. Uh, DL, I thought it was D.L. Moody, or he's not licensed. That's why some guys prefer never to be ordained. He was never ordained. And so some places don't require that. He was never ordained. Uh, all right, verse 8. Uh, filled with Peter, then, do we still have that in your notes? Yeah, okay. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Uh, it, that is where our power comes from. Acts 1.8, after that, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, as it says in Acts 1, verse 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. 
Ephesians 5, 8. Uh, Ephesians 5, 8 doesn't say, uh, be ye not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, Ephesians 5, 8. 518, excuse me. Isn't that what it says here? Yeah. Be not drunk with wine wherein is a, a excess. Okay, so it's not the grape juice that's in there. It's the alcohol that, we, we always say it's the alcohol that's in there. Uh, but be filled, but be filled with the Spirit. So we are to be filled with the Spirit. And that's what gives us the boldness to speak. If we say that this is, and I include this in the armor of God. If you go to the armor of God, Ephesians chapter 6. The armor of God begins here, uh, verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the uh, de devil. All right, if we back up to verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So uh, it, we have a, uh, uh, you know, who knows? I probably preached out of here and had my outline here. That's the power. It says put on the whole armor of God. That's the putting. And, and then the purpose is that you can stand against the wiles of the devil in verse 11. Uh, and then verse 13, when you put this armor on, that is the protection to put on armor to be able to withstand in the evil day. Uh, and not all armor, uh, uh, earthly armor, uh, protects. Where did, uh, how was uh, Ahab killed? Uh, no, there was a man that uh, he had his armor on, and he said, "At a, uh, a not a whim. What what's the word? It's on a uh, by chance. It doesn't say by chance. It says by chance. Uh, he 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 took an arrow. I I I, I took an arrow. In it. I, oh, I shot an arrow. Isn't that a famous poem? I shot an arrow in the air. Where it landed, I know not where. By by hap." Or he, he shot an arrow, and then by, I think it says by half, H-A-P, that means by chance. It hit Ahab, and it, it, it hit him in the, the joints of the harness. It was the joint of the harness where it hit him. In other words, where, the, where it joined together, that little crack is where the arrow went in. And, uh, and hit him. So, but all spiritual armor is going to protect you, right? Earthly armor may not protect you, right? But earthly uh, armor will. So uh, iron-clad ships, they started putting iron on their ships to, to stop the shells. Well, they just make bigger shells, right? So they blow it up. All right, we're to uh, put on the whole armor of God. This is not a study in the armor of God. The protection, and then verse 18 of, of Ephesians 6, praying always, the protection, the praying, and we're protected by prayer, folks. Praying, as in verse 19, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, the preaching, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the gospel, known the mystery of the gospel. So we pray in the Spirit, and then in that that uh, boldness would be given uh, to us. So when we have, it gives us, the Holy Spirit gives us boldness in which to speak. All right, and he addresses the rulers of the people. Verse eight, back here, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. So he is addressing the ruling class here. Uh, what do they, uh, in the Senate, how do they open up the Senate? Do they still open up the Senate the same way? Congress is still open in prayer. Yeah. They, they still open in prayer. They still open in prayer. They still have a chapel. All right. Now, verse 7, they ask a question in Acts 4, verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they, they asked, by what power, by what name hath he done this? When a person does that, asks you, there are very few times since I've been saved that anybody's ever asked me. But they asked. It was just recently. Uh, if it wasn't this past week, I don't know when our plaster man came, but he asked, what's the difference? He's a Roman Catholic. He said, what's the difference between 
uh, St. Mary's and your church. And he said, I always wanted to ask you when I was pla did the plastering here, he said, what's the difference? So what do you do when a man asks you? You tell them. And not, you're not going to get asked every day. You're not going to get asked every day. My uncle asked about what is, uh, uh, I had Jesus saved, Jesus saves on the van, and he said, and he made a joke. Anybody recall the joke he made? What bank? It, exactly. He said, uh, is that Jesus' savings and loan? He made a joke out of it. I think he would, my mother would say that he would make a uh, call the Bible yesterday's what? News. Yesterday's newspapers. Folks, there's mockers everywhere at any age and in every era. Uh, turn, if you would, to 1 Peter. That should be in your notes. 1 Peter 3.15. 1 Peter 3.15. So when the question comes up, when the question comes up, be ready with an answer. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready when? <coughs> Always. To give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. And here's another, another uh, uh, you know, I, I made an outline out of this. Uh, and the, the title of it was B, B-E. Be real. Uh, most people are not real, folks. If, uh, if you're one way this way and another way that way, what do they call that? I'm this way to your face this way and I'm that way to your face behind it then. A hypocrite, two-faced. A hypocrite and, and two-faced. We are to be real. Be ready. Uh, always be reliable. Be reasoning. We are to uh, uh, to give an answer. Be responsible. We have been given this responsibility. And reason. We are to reason with them. And then in the hope that is in you with meekness. I would and uh, and the other last two. There's seven of my have here. And that is be respectful, and be reverent. One time we were. Uh, I was with our, my first Baptist. Uh, my Baptist preacher, he, there was three of us, and we were witnessing, I think we were in Solon, and we were passing out tracks, and it was a Saturday, and, and I had the opportunity, we, we took turns, it was my turn to deal with this guy, it was a young fellow, he's 19, he didn't know how to get rid of us, he was kind of a big guy, and they were foo-foo in the lawn, father was foo-foo in the lawn, and he was doing something, and, and I got to witness to him, and, and I got a good witness about the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ in there. He didn't, I don't think, he could have asked, if he did ask, you know how, when you ask a question, you say, why did I ask that question? I wish I hadn't asked that question. He may have asked, uh, not that he desired, I don't know what his motive was, but I gave him the answer, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and then it, was, it was time for us to go. It, he, he, he wasn't under conviction, it was, uh, we, we need to move on to the next house. We're moving on. And the pastor, he said, I just want you to be, be aware. The end is coming. And, and I'll never forget his closing remark was, don't take any marks. And I'm thinking, oh, come on. You know, the mark of the beast. And, and I'm thinking, why would you tell that kid that is as if he's into the end days? I mean, he's just, he, he's just living life like any other American. And he brought that up. He needs to first get saved before he gets into any of that stuff. Just don't take any marks. Like they're passing them out like jelly beans at the grocery store. And, uh, and I thought, man, he just ruined everything I said. Yeah, I, and what led up to that, he jumped in and, Gave all kinds of stuff. It wasn't with meekness and with fear. A lot, of, a lot has to do with attitude, folks. With, with the attitude. 
All right, back here, uh, the rebuke. Verses uh, uh, <clears throat> the rebuke is rebuking these leaders. And the Sanhedrin shows up. I, I call them the Sanhedrin. That word is not given there. Verses 5 through 7. They, they name off who is there. And he says, uh, he's filled with the Spirit. Uh, it's done through the Spirit. He preaches the Savior. In verses 9 and 10. If, this, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by... Impotent means without power or powerless. He, he can't get up. He can't, they had to move him there. Uh, by what means he is whole, be it known unto you and all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified. I mean, that's a, that's a rebuke. You know, they're, they're, they're going to make this man's death, uh, put this man's blood on us. They say that. Whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. So he, they preach the Savior, uh, and we have Romans uh, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, the pao, that there's power in the gospel, right? Romans 1, 16. Uh, right now I can't quote that. Romans 1, 16, uh, it states, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You know, pe people can read it on a billboard, people can hear it, and, and they're really not listening. And then one day, it, it, one day, there's a need there, and all of a sudden, it, the lights go on, and it becomes real to them. The Savior, verse 11 of Acts 4, the Sanhedrin is there, the Spirit is there, preaches the Savior, he uses the Scripture. Verse 11, this little outline here. This is the stone which was set at naught of the builders, which has become the head of the corner, which is uh, Psalm uh, 118, quoted in Matthew 21, uh, Isaiah uh, 28, the stone. And, uh, and in Daniel, the stone, what? It engulfs the whole, it becomes a mountain. And that may be coming up here in some of these notes. And then preaches salvation, that there's no, no salvation in any other name but Christ. So that is the, the rebuke. There's no other way to be saved. Uh, and when they get up and they're defending uh, uh, Islam, you know, we went to the hospital and uh, she wanted to, uh, now the big debate. You, you, you broke your arm. Where do you go? Yeah, which hospital? The nearest Pardon? The nearest one. The nearest one? <laughs> now, now that did cross my mind. Yeah, but you see, now, now look at the nearest one where the insurance covers not Bedford. <laughs> All right, now there's three opinions right there. Now, now the insurance part did, did come into my mind. The nearest one came into my mind, and not Bedford came into our minds. Now, she's not on Medicare yet, and she's on Medical Mutual, and I paid the bill. You know, we paid the last bill, and so she's, she's got coverage. And we're not sure. You never know what kind of coverage. You know, the packet's that thick. What coverage do you have until you need it? And we're on a very high deductible. And so they gave her the dressing gown because you had to unbutton that thing and, and it wasn't quite. So they gave her the dressing gown. I, well, I said, well, there's $85 for the, or $185 for the dressing gown, you know, to take that with us. She said, well, throw, we were, this morning, she said, well, throw it away. I said, we're keeping that. The kids can play doctor with it. <laughs> Let them play doctor with it. So then the thought, now, uh, Marymount did not, it, it, it did cross my mind, but I didn't, it didn't come out of my mouth. Marymount did not come out of my mouth. I, I said, well, we could go to Bedford. Uh, Hoosier. You're covered at Hoosier. Huh? You're covered at Hoosier. We are covered at Hoosier. Uh, so, I, I, 
I didn't want to, I don't, I don't know where we're covered. That, that did, and then we could go to Twinsburg, where we go to the doctor, and we don't like that. She said, there's, there's a urgent care there, or she said, there's one in Brexville. But Sagamore is shut, shut down, so now we have to make this choice. Where are we going to go? So uh, uh, she needs her, her insurance cards. Now, where did she leave them? Pardon? At home in her birth. Oh, no, we're, we're at home. Oh, okay. We're at home. So where's the purse, though? Yes. The, the purse is here. So uh, I can't use my card because I'm on Medicare and, and I'm on medical, you know, Part B, and then I have the supplement is medical mutual. So I can't use my card, it's a different plan. So she's still on the old plan, which they eliminated because I'm not on it, and they just issued her a new plan. So she's got an old card and uh, a new old card, and, and the other card. We don't know one card for another. So I drive in here, and we're still debating where to go. We get up here to, the, to here, and she said, oh, you're going to Bedford? And I said, no, we're going to the church. We have to get your purse. You know, but by, by the house, from the house to here, she forgot we have to get a purse. That's why she forgot the purse here. So we got the purse. So we have the purse. And then I said, where do you, I'll take you anywhere you want, wherever you want. So the decision was Ahuja. So we went to Ahuja. And, and well, she discusses, well, who's at these places? All right. Uh, now, now you say, why are you? Uh, it, why are you bringing this up? All right. There's no other way to be saved. We walk in. This is at Ahuja. First thing I see is uh, the woman's got. She's working there. Everything but a burqa. That's what's working. Yeah, I know it's a free country. The first one we meet, there's tattoos up and down the arms. Like it, look, he looks like a reptile. All right, now, uh, and how do you get, uh, what's the bad herpes? What's the bad herpes? Not the kind that you get a, a, a canker sore, that's herpes. What's the bad herpes? Or, oh no, hepatitis. It's hepatitis. hepatitis. Well, there's the bad herpes, there's the bad hepatitis, what's hepatitis, which is, which? C. Listen, we had a guy here with the bad hepatitis. C. Nicest guy, tattooed, I mean, he, he looked like he belonged in the tattoo artist and he worked for the post office, nicest guy, and he thinks he got it from needles, from the tattooing. This guy looks like a snake. Uh, they, they first, they, they, they ask her the questions. Basically, they're trying to narrow it down. Did I beat her up? Let's just say it like it is. Did you beat up your wife? Did, did you beat your wife up? They have a way of putting it. Are you safe at home? Do you feel threatened? Etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's the nice way of doing it. So then, finally, we make it back there. But we met everything, everything from every cage in the zoo between there and in the back room. So it didn't matter if you went to Bedford. It didn't matter where you go. We just got to get this thing not set, but ready to go to. And I don't know what doctor we're going. If we're going to a Jewish doctor, I hope he's the best in town. Whoever name it is, and we're going to go over there on Monday. But I'm telling you, when, when, when that uh, candidate, I don't know what about the other candidate, but when Hillary gets up there and says, it's a wonderful religion, a worldwide religion, and you're attacking, I'm sorry, folks, there's no other way to be saved than Jesus. And they can try to make as many allies as they can. But Jesus is the way, the only way. So Waters World was interviewing the Amish uh, the other day. So he's interviewing the Amish. How do you feel about the presidential election? And, and the girl behind the counter that's selling trail baloney says, uh, I don't know, where, I, I'm not voting, I don't know. They, none of them know anything. They don't know anything. They're not voting, and they don't care, and they know Jesus is the way. I'm not saying Amish people are saved, but they're not involved in this. And these people, they just want to connect, make everything, we're all roads, uh, let's folks, 
All roads but one lead to hell. Not all roads lead to the same God. All, all roads but one, all roads but one lead to the same God. The devil. And only one road leads to, to God, and that's Jesus. Amen. There's no other way. For by grace are you saved through faith in that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Right? Uh, and these other verses, I, I don't know. Let's go to, is that the, our, our, that's it. That's it. That was it. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, John 8, go to John 8. Now, we, when I say we, we, the French word, as far as my wife and myself, we are not involved in the world. We, uh, I would assume most of you, you have your circle of friends, your circle in the neighborhood, and uh, my job I work alone. I study alone. Uh, I, I'm not out amongst in, in a factory, folks. I know I know people that could be in a factory. They have to see a psychi a psychiatrist. Christians, they're so upset with with the with the jerks they work with. Now, I don't know how I would take it, but it's. Uh, uh, we went fishing on, on Friday. I'm not around smokers or drinkers. I, I'm just not around that. And so first thing, we, 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 get out of, we, we get out of the truck, and a guy, he, well, and he struck it in there. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I guess I'm different than I was 40 years ago. I said, now there's a real man. I mean, we're fishing. We're going to go out there fishing for perch on a south e uh, with a southeast wind. East is <coughs> east is least, and that's what we had. West is best. So there you. I said, "Wow, you're quite a man. You you carry your bait in your mouth." I don't know. I thought it was hilarious. I don't know if I was going to win him over that way, but you know, I mean, there it was. He's got his night crawlers right there. What a man. You know, I'm not around these guys. Like so when we went when we went to the hospital, yeah, these are the professionals. Was enough to uh, say, man, I'm, I, I'm glad I'm not here every day. Just glad I'm not there every day. Oh, they come in. They want their radios done. We do the SWAT team. Yeah, and he he, he looks like he's a the lizard man from. Uh, from uh, Tasmania. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it's cuckoo. You know, tattoos for Jesus. Oh, who are you fooling? Who are you fooling? Verse 24, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. There's only one way there. Listen, you could have tattoos. But after you get saved, that ends it. Right? Tattoos don't send you to hell. Not believing in Christ sends a person to hell. But once you got saved, you stop all that stuff. Amen. All right. Impotent. Is that on your list? All right. Without power, powerless, we, we did that. Is the stone on your list? All right, we'll pick that up there tomorrow. That's the last thing. That's the last thing. Oh, I had that on there. We did that one. And I got a ton of others. We'll start there on the stone, and then there'll be a whole slew of more notes. Father, bless now the preaching and following. In Christ's name, amen.